As much as a headphone enthusiast as I am for music, I am for gaming. Uh, people who buy headphones tend to use them for a bit of both. So I haven't really gone into depth of a why a headphone is good or bad for gaming. So I will cover that all right now. Uh, we have three ba main sections of headphones. We've got the entry level here. We've got the mid-level here. Well, I guess I could consider that mid-level. And this is the high-end stuff over here. Now, don't think this represents the spectrum. It, I would need a much bigger table to go through that. But uh, we're going to discuss basic, basic things about headphones and what makes them good or bad for either music or gaming or both. Comfort is number one. Always number one. I have a test. When I get any pair of headphones to review, I will put them on my head and I will not play music for as long as I can stand the headphones. And some headphones, like these costs, were really uncomfortable and you get about 20 minutes just sitting there with headphones with nothing playing you're not distracted by the sound you, you forget that you actually have to put this on your head and keep them there so these are a low these are low uh, then you start getting into the more comfortable ones these tax stars comfortable right out of the box the NVX or brainwaves beautifully comfortable uh, mad dogs are like leather leather sofas so there's no questions about that and then of course some of the most comfortable headphones like these HD 600s, which I haven't yet to do the full review of. But the point is, like these Tascam task games here uh, have interchanged pads, so these are very good headphones, but they suck when you first get them. In fact, they're real uncomfortable. And these pads can be just bought. These are the pads designed for the NVX Brainwaves. Pop them right on there. And that fixes comfort. The idea is to get the initial thing about a headphone is as most comfortable as possible. And I could wear... 598s, the, these uh, 2000s, or anything in the AD Audio Technica line. Super locks with the interchange pads again. So, once comfort's settled and weight is settled and you can wear them for hours, like you need for a gaming headset or any headset, period, then you move on. So, next thing I usually look at with music is frequency response, and you usually want a neutral frequency response. You don't want the bass to be too much, you don't want the treble to be too high, and in gaming, that doesn't really matter. Because when you listen to music, you listen to violins or you know, drum and bass or whatever the hell you're listening to, and it's, you will notice when something is screwed up. But with gaming, when you're running around shooting at things and there's explosions, you will not notice if there's a peak at 6K or if the low end is a little bit lazy and sloppy. These costs, Pro DJ 100s, I do not recommend for music. They are too, the bass is too drawn out and overbearing and sloppy. But when you're playing a game and an explosion happens, that is a quality you kind of want. Now, games will either have good audio or bad audio. I can't judge that. I know Battlefield 4 has some of the best audio I've ever heard in a game. But every one of these will handle that game differently. When you get shot, when you hear a gunshot come across your head it's going to be different in everything now let's go to open versus closed because when you buy a gaming headset most of them are closed I, i'd say 90 percent i haven't done super research but they're all closed and what closed basically means is that when you put them on you can't hear your loud gaming computer or the air conditioner or anything else that's making noise and when you're in like a, a LAN environment and people are screaming and you don't want to hear that. You don't want to be distracted. Now, close is a good option for gaming because since everything's blocked out, you could hear foot you could hear footsteps much more easily. That's why close is usually what you play for gaming. But here's the deal with closed: they don't do sound stage and positional audio as well as open. So on this table, I have closed, 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 closed semi-closed, well, semi-open, and the rest are open, 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 and if I had to pick up headphones at random, if I just pick one of these categories for gaming, it would be open, because an open headphone, when you put it on, the driver can speak out and in, so you do hear your computer, you hear your air conditioner, hopefully those things are quiet enough to deal with, but when there is a sound around your head, these do a better job. And not just 
And in, that's an in general, that's a generalization of open headphones usually can do a better positional information job than closed. Most people can't use closed, if you can't use closed, if you can't use open, if you have family members, people that sleep while you're gaming, uh, if you want to use them, you know, anywhere in public, it's real difficult. But I would strive to use an open set of headphones for gaming. Now, we got to talk about surround sound headphones and surround sound headsets. Those are the biggest pile of bullshit. It is as big as the sky. I would look outside and just be a big pile of bullshit. Because uh, surround sound in a headset is... Actually, let me get a picture up. Hold on. Where am I looking? There's my mouse. There. There are the Tritons with four drivers in each and a controller and oh my god no it doesn't matter here's what happens when you go with a surround sound headset yes you get four drivers but they're all small you see when you get a let's see where's a good one that you could see the driver when you get a good headphone and this is an open pair of hc 600s so it's a very good headphone that driver is 50 millimeters or at least 50 millimeters and that bigger driver is bigger, that driver is bigger than all those drivers. And since it's so close to your ear, you really can't tell that, that difference that this is trying to BS onto you. So you're left with very expensive headphone, headset, I'm gonna call it a headset. Headphones are real, are stereo only. And headsets are the only things that'll have surround sound. So you gotta deal with this box, and you gotta have this controller, and you gotta have all these drivers, and none of that makes it sound any better than if you just had a really good set of stereo headphones and the processing in the game to deal with it, all right? I guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. That is a gimmick and you are buying it for some reason. Now, let's move on to, where were we? Surround sounds BS. Uh, the driver to small positional audio. Uh, I will link to the, in the description or here if I can muster it. The virtual barbershop. I don't know if you ever heard it. Put on a regular set of headphones on any device you'd like and play the virtual barbershop in stereo on YouTube. And it will sound like a man is going to shave your head from the back. That is the exact same stuff that video games can process and give to you. So that when you hear footsteps there, they're there. And then when they start walking around behind you, the sound changes in a way that psychoacoustics have proven that will make it sound like it's coming from behind you. So you do not need multiple drivers in your headphone. Done. Uh, price per performance for gaming. Now, diminishing returns in music, people will go on and on and on, and they'll be like, oh, way up there, way, just in the bathroom over there is just where you need to be to really hear the nuance of the violins. Gaming doesn't fucking care, all right? The nuance of a bullet whizzing by is not part of the experience. As long as you get clear vocals for any in-game chat, as long as you get explosions that are visceral, you know, I'm going to cut off at like $250 to $300. is as most you should spend if you're buying headphones just for gaming. These Mad Dogs are $300. These 600s were under $300. These are actually most expensive. Well, these are the most expensive ones, but these 880s are not, not really in that range if you're going gaming. And they're too flat. We'll get to every one of these in a second. But, you know, anything above crap, well, these are not crap. I don't have anything that's crap. But anything above a little bit and right before a lot is usually a butter zone for gaming. Now, soundstage varies per unit, like I said, open and closed. So you have to wonder you know, individually which, is, which has better soundstage. Right now, these Superlux 668s, which are real cheap, they're like $35, have probably the best separation. You put these on, and things don't sound, you know, like they're a little bit. They sound like they're, whoa, way away from you. So for gaming, I actually like these quite a bit, even though, you know, with the pads, it's like $50. I would probably game in these before I game in something even more expensive like these 598s. And one of the reasons for that is these have no bass. And if you're gaming and there's explosions, you want that experience. You want, boom, firing a shotgun. Or, and these don't do it. These, some of these other ones do it. These AKGs don't do low end either. 
So I should just be throwing these over my shoulders and eliminating headphones now that I don't think work best for gaming. They'll all work for gaming, obviously. They'll all work to watch, you know, Pokemon videos. But which are the best ones from this table? Uh, features. Let's talk about features for a second. Removable cable is really nice. Removable, removable. I made this removable. The NVX slash Brainways removable cable. These are also very comfortable. They're also closed, so those are pretty much why I bought them in the first place. 5 and eight removable. Mad Dogs is removable, and as retarded as the system is, the 600s have a removable cable. Um, anime Girl with a gas mask and chains. Let's talk about some headphones that aren't here, because I've reviewed them and I just don't have them here anymore. So, Sony MDR, 7506s or 9s, I think these are. Very good low end. Very comfortable, very light. Fixed cable. Soundstage was just mediocre. So, for gaming... That's a good choice, but there's probably better ones I could talk about. Uh, AKG 550s are expensive. I didn't find them super comfortable, regardless of how big that pad is, and I wouldn't be upset if you bought those for gaming, but they're better. DT770 Pros. Those headphones had the best bass of any closed headphone I've ever used, and excellent separation. So if you're looking for a closed set, of gaming headphones. I don't own the best ones here. Those are the best ones. We could discuss Mad Dogs as being semi-open, and maybe these are better than those, but I wouldn't want to put money on that bet. Open now. Tackstar 671s are the most ridiculously sized headphones. They're massive. Uh, but they're comfortable, and they're damn good sound stage for gaming. They look ridiculous, and you know that's just something you have to deal with. But who cares, as long as you're winning. It's more about... I don't care about style. That's an, I'm going to skip a point. Style in a headphone doesn't matter if you can win with them. Right? Don't buy headphones because they're red and green and yellow and they've got pictures of dragons on them. It doesn't fucking matter. What matters for a gamer is that you can hear where people are that you need to kill and then go kill them. Right? It also matters if it's... If you're there, if you're playing this game and you want to experience it, you want it to be like, holy God, that plane just crashed and now there's zombies flying out of it. You want to be, you know, terrified by that. So that matters too. Um, like these Grotto Prestige 80s. I know people who game in those. They're a base light like a MOF. So I don't know if I'd recommend those. Uh, the K7XXs. These are a Mass Drop exclusive. Or you can get these... 612 for the 712 anniversaries, which are not. Those have tremendous bass and are super comfortable and very good soundstage. The question is, do I recommend those over wait, these? The Philips Fidelio X2s. Because these are $200 and these are $300, but they have been on sale. And those were life-changing headphones. And these were very, very good headphones. So, you know, take, take one, take a number. Those, again, both open. Here are the HD400Is, which I'm getting a pair to review shortly. So probably three weeks you'll see a review of that up, because I do use them for quite a while before I make my final thoughts. And those are planars, which I'm not even going to start talking about what planars can do. And, uh... All right, now we're looking at... Let's look at some gaming headsets. Yet, yeah, no. The Psycho with the red. This is just marketing selling you shit. Don't buy it. Don't buy the Tritons. Hey, look at those. The HyperX Cloud 2s. What do those look like? Huh? Those remind you of any particular set of headphones? The HyperCloud X2s, I'm going to take a, a second to talk about, are Tackstar Pro 80s, which I reviewed and gave a very good rating as a gaming headset. They just stuck a microphone right here. And that is the best idea a company has had in a long time. Take something that's good already and then dress it up so that the unknowing gamers across the world are like, oh, and then they put them on and go, wow. Because these are like $70 headphones. And they're good. They're really good for their price. And when you tell people they're gaming headphones, it's a gaming headset, it's a gaming headset, they jump all over it. 
And all of a sudden, that's the best one. Now, there are better headphones than the Pro 80s for gaming. And if anyone took a pair of, like, well, 600s is a little crazy. But even if they took the Superlux here, the 668Bs, and they shoved a microphone on it and said, it's a gaming headset, then those will all of a sudden be the best for gaming. So it's, it's just got to do your research on what's, what's out there and what isn't out there. Uh, microphones. Gaming headset has a microphone. That's a given. Now, does that mean you need to buy a gaming headset to get a microphone? Hell no. Look at this. Here's the mod mic, the Antlion mod mic. It has little stick-on things with magnets, and you could turn any set of headphones, click, into a microphone headset. You just run this damn long-ass cord straight down yours, and you're done. So, now that I've covered that, or you could use a uh, desktop microphone. There's my Logitech up there sticking out. And where I am here, that microphone picks me up clear as crystal. And everyone can hear what I'm doing in gaming. And I don't have to have any extra stuff hanging on my head. These are good. These up-close mics are good for loud environments to hear just your voice. If you're in a, your own room and you don't have anything banging in the background or people talking, a desktop mic, a blue snowball will work. You get a mod mic or the Zalman sells a clip-on that actually clips on to the actual headphone wire. There are ways around needing a microphone built into a headphone. Right, you don't need a headset. I should have started this video saying that. Let's talk power. Because you're all looking at these headphones and going, oh, I want to buy one of those headphones. But can you push them? So I have a stack over here. Hello, little stack of external USB DACs. They're all stereo. Actually, there's, there's DAC amps, and then there's just amps. And we'll discuss that. Oh, I didn't even talk about my little... Uh, I would even use these for gaming. The Porta Pros. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Hell yeah. Now, some of these headphones are hard to drive. That means your onboard's going to have a fucking heart attack. Uh, if you have, like, a gaming sound card, if you spent the money already on like a Zonar, you'll probably be fine for just about everything on this table. But, if you're using Onboard, and you think that you could A, use more quality, the Onboard sound has gotten much better over the years, but still, no, not the greatest. So, a DAC, which is basically just a sound card that is stereo only and external, which, I have any pure DACs here? Yes, I do. The Mahdi here. Here. This is a DAC. This is a shit Mahdi. RCA outs, USB in, the end. You plug this into your computer. Your computer says, is this your sound card? You say yes. And beautiful, clean, well-separated stereo comes on. That's the deal with, with, a, with a good DAC. Is the separation between left and right can get screwed up in a lot of things. And the better your DAC, the better separation, the better channel separation you have, the more you hear things like that. Now... This is like a hundred bucks. Now, if you want to try something something cheaper, here are my two starter USB DAC and amp combinations. So, here's my roommate's uh, Fio E10K, and here's my shit full of, or full of shit. And it's just USB, USB, you plug it in, your sound card, it says, are these your sound cards? And you say yes. With the fuller, you get a volume knob and a headphone out. And that's it. Now... This is made in America, which is why it costs a premium, and it's got very sharp edges. But that's really hard to beat for quality and power. The E10K, however, and I gave it a mediocre review for music. Let's talk about it for gaming. You have USB in. You have a line out, so you can run a 3.5mm to a set of speakers. You've got a high and low gain switch, so that if you have easy-to-drive headphones or hard to drive headphones like these you could flip that and push them you got a coaxial out for a surround receiver granted it will not push a dts signal it'll only push stereo out which is sort of weird and here on the front you have a big volume knob which again hey is those footsteps do you really want to be messing around with keyboard volumes you want an external volume so you can be like i was just birds and the e10k has a bass boost switch now Bass boost switch for music, people are like, what are you, what are you, oh my god, and they spit on you. 
But whenever I when I had my E10, my original E10, every time I played a game, that bass boost went on. Because in a game, like I said about frequency response, it doesn't matter. There is no reference point where like, well, this is not what a violin sounds like. It's too bassy. Well, this is not what an explosion sounds like. Of course it's what an explosion sounds like, or who cares? You just want your head to vibrate when anything explodes. So having a bass boost option for gaming is truly a remarkable thing. And I will rescind my bad review and say, for gaming, E10K is the way to go. Uh, here is my audio engine, and this is an expensive uh, DAC amp combo. Again, USB in, RCA out so you can run it to an amp, an optical input so you could run this from your game console. If you want to play games, there's uh, two, two amp DAC combos you can get. This one, which is really expensive, like 160 bucks, and then there's the SMSL SD793-2, which... Also, which only takes, doesn't take USB in, it only takes optical and coaxial digital. So you can put your computer output from your stock sound card and you can put a game console in here and you can switch in the front and you have a beautiful headphone amp. And this will push just about everything on this table really well. Uh, again, this might be a little overkill. I'm getting to the point now where diminishing returns, you're not going to notice the, no bass boost, no, no external power. So you may want to skip on that and look at the ST793. Now these two are really a pair. This is a straight headphone amp. Again, just RCA ins. Give me signal. You could take a you could buy just this, plug it into your laptop, plug your headphones in here that are hard to drive and just drive them. They just make it louder. So you add a good DAC to a good amp, you get a shit stack, and now you've got excellent channel separation and excellent amplification, and you've spent, well, like $200, but you're done with that. And here's the amp that I personally use. Uh, my DAC is up there, it's that giant Emotiva. And USB to that, volume control, aluminum remote, and I use my FIO EO9K, which is a, it's designed to have the E17 DAC dropped in it, and then you could use it as a DAC amp combo. But I found the E17's DAC not as good as, well, my other stacks of DACs. So I just use this line-ins, big, generous, crazy head volume knob, high-low gain switch. So the hardest headphones on this table are the Th Mad Dogs and these, and I could probably run them all, like, at 10 o'clock. This is a monster. So that's why I use this in my daily, daily everything. Uh... I think I've covered everything. Let's talk about everyone individually for gaming. All right, fine. Run through this real quick. Yes, Porta Pros. I think it'd be hilarious, but they are really good headphones. And although the bass is not going to be insane, separation is amazing. The openness is amazing. Positional audio would be amazing. Tascams, not as good. Certainly comfortable once you put these pads on it. Very comfortable. Good low-end response, closed, I'd say these are also a yes. Now, the cost Pro DJ 100s. I said no for music, and I will say no for these for gaming if you don't change these pads. These are the worst thing that you'll ever get in your head. Really well built, though. A lot of aluminum on them. No detachable wire. Sort of sucks. Superlux 668Bs, yes. They're just a yes. The best detachable cable mod. You change the pads out to something a little more comfortable. They're a lot... They're they're light and they're cheap. And if you're a freaked out gamer that throws your headphones, buy these. Because if you break them, it's like $35. The AKG uh, K240 Studios. Now, these have no bass. They have decent separation, but no bass. And uh, you could do better. No. Uh, Tackstar. Well, if you like the HyperX Cloud 2s, then you'll like these. And these take the modded pads. These are not the pads it comes with. These are, again... HM5 pads. I recommend them on pretty much everything. These are HM5 pads. These are HM5 pads. Obviously, the NVX have HM5 pads, and these were the gaming headphones I bought originally. Now, these are really neutral. These don't have a bass boost. They don't have a tw travel boost. Their sound stage is adequate. These are sort of middle of the road. And for g pure gaming, for pure gaming, I'd probably do the Pro 80s over the NVX or Brainwaves. 
Just just saying. Uh, here are the Tackstar 2050s, which are the open version of the Pro 80s. Now, these, if you have, if you want to try open headphones for gaming, you either get the 668s or you get the Pro, you get the uh, high 2050s. These are super comfortable to start. They don't come with a detachable cable. I had to mod this. Stock pads are good. Separation is good. Bass is good. Try those out. They're cheap, too. They're like $65 to $70. Uh, five and eights. These are a no. These are a no because they lack bass. Again, low end in a game is important. Low end on music, you can get away with saying, oh, well, I don't listen to bassy music. I Every game needs to have a rumble to it. Every game needs to have a visceral impact sound to it. And the separation of these is very good. I could, You can game in them. You just... I think you could do better. Um... All right, these are my uh, Audio Technica 2000 X's. Just lay there, keyboard, it's fine. And I gamed Battlefield 4 on these, and I was like smitten. Now these don't have the greatest low end, just like the Five Nights don't have the greatest low end. But the way these deliver sound, sound stage wise, fuck. Um, 800s too neutral, too too mid range centered you could actually get away with a high low peak v shape with gaming so these are too expensive to even consider the mr speakers mad dogs which are going getting sold out right now probably some of the most comfortable headphones you'll ever wear just i mean look at those look at those pads they're semi-open I means you put them on and you pretty much don't hear anything i've worn them for hours i've played games in them for hours the positional audio on these is excellent these are a definite yes for gaming and then finally, we come to the new, newest pair of headphones I purchased. And I purchased them for, for music. These are the HC600s. They're the most comfortable stock headphone I've had in a long, long, long time. They weigh nothing. They sound super neutral and accurate. My only concern with them is, for gaming, the soundstage is very restricted between the cups. You never, it never sounds like something is farther away than it actually is. You know you're wearing headphones. They're just so good at that job. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say HC600s are what you should be using for gaming. Right? If you have them for music, oh yeah. But for gaming, a more broken headphone is what you want. So, that was a basic overview. I will answer anyone's questions in the, in the comments. Uh, my headphone recommendation post will be located in the description and I may uh, include a gaming thing of, as far as like a percentage from zero don't use these for gaming to 99 yeah definitely you know yes yes even though these are base light it doesn't matter the, the, the sharpness of the bullets was insane yes 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 uh, unbelievably yes even though there's a mono with a mono switch uh, these are good and they do yes. Questions, comments, leave them. Oh, one last thing. After all this gaming headphone talk, speakers are better.